Discover Help presents Stress-Free Living with Ray Savage and Mr. Stress-Free, Ratanjit S. Sandhi. This audio program is an unscripted and unrehearsed conversation between Ray and Ratanjit. It is shared with you in hope of adding value to your life. We encourage you to listen to this program in its entirety to receive the full impact of its message. Sit back, relax, open your heart, mind, and soul to this edition of Stress-Free Living. This is Stress-Free Living. I'm Ray Samich. Welcome to our program today. And as always, my co-host and longtime friend and source of wisdom, Ratanjit Sande. Ratanjit, how are you today? Wonderful, Ray. How are you? Excellent. Thank you. And so good to be back with you live again here today. And we are live on the radio. If you're listening on 1330 or 101.5, if you're listening at uh, wintradio.com on the internet, anywhere in the world, or perhaps you are catching us on YouTube where all of our prior shows have been posted so that you can view or listen to them anytime. And we also have our Zoom audience uh, today, as in every week, if you'd like to join us in Zoom, we, we can talk to you during the breaks and before and after the show, you can visit our website or our Facebook page and get the link and join us on Zoom every week. Ratanjit, you have picked a unique topic here today that I am intrigued about because social consciousness is an awareness of everything that's around us. And they say it's good to be socially conscious. And yet our title of the show today is The Trap of Social Consciousness. And I think this is really worthwhile because everybody wants to be relevant. Everybody wants to be aware. Everybody wants to to say they know what's going on and, and they have compassion for what's going on. They wanna do the right thing in society. But is there a trap to it? Is there something that we're actually making a situation even worse with our awareness and with our actions? So I think it's interesting that we'll talk about this today. I thank you for uh, giving us that inner introduction. <laughs> but, but I think the social consciousness is supposed to make us aware of the surroundings means we understand the good and bad about it. And then we have this brain which can decide what is good for the overall society. And, but when your brain is guided by what is in it for me, then this awareness is only limited. We only make ourselves aware of what interests you, what is going to benefit you, what is going to make you rich, what is going to make you famous. So our awareness also is not fully comprehended until we uh, look through the real us if we are looking through our five senses, our fear, our greed, our ego, or our jealousy, or our anger, all that, then it, it gives us a different picture of what is around us. Because anything which we are not comfortable with, instead of understanding that, instead of comprehending that fully, we just on the surface say, this is not good. This just should go away from our society. And that's, that is what has been happening. Well, before we even get to that problem, you know, you, you sometimes you, you, you seem like you make things really, really difficult. <laughs> and, and, and you've done it again, because that's like on step three. Okay. Once you're at social consciousness, how are you evaluating? How are you making decisions? Let's go back to step zero before you even start, because there's a tremendous number of people that aren't socially conscious at all. They are so focused on their life. That may be one example where they're just so focused on themselves, 
or their immediate responsibilities that they don't have any awareness of anything going on around them. They, they, they just put it off. And I think there are many people today that have gone back to that because they're tired of seeing on the news all of these things that they have to supposedly pay attention to. So as a little bit of a rebellion, they say, you know what, I'm not going to, I'm, I'm not going to care anymore. I'm only going to care about my family and myself, and I'm not going to worry because everybody wants my money, everybody wants my attention, everybody wants my vote, everybody wants all of these things of me, and I just, it's enough. And I've seen people kind of, you know, withdraw within themselves and say, I'm not going to be social conscious anymore. Now, maybe they don't know that term, but that's what they're actually saying. So there's a group of people like that that I'd like to talk about with you. And then there's another group of, of people, I think, that they are just unaware. They, they, it, isn't a, it isn't a decision that they're making. They just don't know and don't pay attention to the world around them and all the things to be socially conscious of. And as a result, they listen to what people say and they buy into that. And whether it's the advertising industry that's telling them what they have to pay attention to, whether it's the government, whether it's you know, some private groups that are, that are giving them information, and these people are socially conscious, but they're not socially conscious based on their own feelings and their own decision making. They're, they're simply buying into a, a concept that other people are selling to them. So I think we've got, you know, those groups of people that aren't even socially conscious the way they should be before they even get to your point of the view and the perspective that they place on it and, you know, and, and the oneness of it. Am I making sense? Well, you're, you're saying the same thing, which I said, Ray, but you're saying that this is, you're giving the results. I'm giving why would we get there? We got there because, or if you have a tinted glass, which has, deep yellow color, and you are going to see everything as yellow, right? Yeah. And you are going to bet everybody there's a look. If somebody planted, I, I just had a uh, eye surgery. I, they planted a uh, lens in my eyes. Supposing they had planted a yellow lens in my eyes. Now I'm seeing everything yellow. And I'm, I'm debating with you. You said, no, Ratanji, it's not yellow. I said, Ray, come on, I can see it. How, how can you say that? So then, now that lens to all of us is coming from our fear. You are a marketing genius. So what do you use? You fear and greed to motivate people to buy product. Right. So the whole society, knowingly or unknowingly, it's not, it's, I'm not blaming that it is their fault, but I'm stating where they are. We are all part in basically gross insecurity coming from our fear, coming from our greed, and that gives us jealousy, that gives us prejudice, that gives us ego, all that happens to us. And we see everything with tainted glasses. So we are aware, but our awareness comes filtered through these lenses. So I am always looking for what is good for me. There are 1.5 million nonprofit organizations in US. Now, their basic motive is to do good in a certain limited sphere. So but what makes them form those organizations is 
knowingly or unknowingly driven by a very narrow perspective. I want to make a difference in this area. I want to make a difference in uh, other area. And as a consequence, they are, because the idea is that I cannot solve every problem, but they are ultimately guided and driven by the human beings who are parked in fear and greed. So I'm not saying that this is, people are bad or good. No, but, I know. But un, you, before you have social awareness, you have to have self-awareness. Social awareness is going to be dependent on what you want to be aware of. If you want to be aware of the fear, if this thing happens in my society, if this law is passed, I'm going to lose this. If this happens, I'm going to sacrifice. Now, the entire system is feeding the greed and fear, and as a consequence has become a race to get more money and more things. Now, a person with more toys, more things, does not really become happy. The self-contentment is completely missing because we are focused, we are going in the wrong direction. We have become very efficient, but we have taken the wrong path. We get there because we have a fast car, fast technology, fast know-how. But when we get there, we have disappointment. So as a consequence, even when we reach the pinnacle of money or fame, we end up feeling very discontented. And sometimes this discontent results into our uh, self-destruction. Uh, we end up destroying ourselves through drugs or alcohol or something like this because we are, we are not happy with what I see with my life. So this is a trap of self-consciousness or social consciousness. But, but I, I still, I want to back you up here still yet, because I, I don't think I was saying the same thing that you are. Okay. Okay. Maybe we should start with kind of an understanding of definition of social consciousness, because mm -hmm. when, when you talk about 1.5 million nonprofit groups, maybe people automatically are thinking that uh, we're talking about conscience, not conscious. And conscience usually implies that there is an evaluation of good, of, of what is right and what is wrong and trying to do the right thing. And social consciousness is not necessarily good or bad, right or wrong. It's just awareness. It, it's simply knowing what's happening. So it isn't, you know, for, for example, on the, um, the Me Too movement, okay, which is uh, gender neutrality and not, and certainly uh, not in any way harming women and not a men dominating over women in the workplace or wherever. That's the Me Too movement. And if you're, you can be aware of Me Too, you can be aware of the consciousness that goes with that, but that doesn't mean by being aware that you are either for it or against it. It's just an awareness of it, okay? So today, there's so many things to be aware of. There are so many issues that have been brought to the surface, many of which, and maybe they should have been, maybe, maybe the, the uh, belief is that all of these things should not be hidden in the closet and pushed underneath the, the carpet, but it seems a little bit overwhelming. I mean, the pandemic itself and all the politics with the pandemic and all of the questions about who should get vaccinated and, and should people be in 
uh, forced to be vaccinated and, and should children be vaccinated? Should children be closed, the schools be closed? You know, the government, should they mandate this and that? And the, the impact on the economy and now, you know, the inflation and the shortage of supplies, all of that with the pandemic is, is feverish pitch on everybody's brain. And then you do have the gender issues, the, the Me Too issues and the, and the sexual orientation issues that everybody's talking about, the, the minority issues, the Black Lives Matter and the defund the police and, and all of those things. Um, you know, the education, a lot of question about the critical race theory and, and what should the teaching be in the, in the classrooms and should parents control what the teachers teach or, you know, all of this is social awareness. And I'm just starting the surface. There's so many other issues that I could put on this list. It becomes overwhelming, I think, to people. And I think, and I know of many people who right today are saying, I don't, I don't want to be socially conscious. I don't, I don't, I can't possibly weigh in on all those issues and what the 24 hour news sources are telling me about it that I can't even trust. You know, the latest poll is that 60, more than two thirds of the people don't believe what they hear on newscasts. More than two thirds don't believe what they hear on newscasts. And so, you know, we don't trust the media. We don't trust our news sources. So I think right now there's a movement by a lot of people not to be socially aware, not to be socially conscious. And, and I, I'd like your, your input on that because it, that's the step, that's the stage even before we talk about how to do it properly is that what do you think of the fact that more people than ever are saying, I don't care about any of this stuff because I can't go crazy worrying about everything. So question is, how did we get here? Eh? We, why, why we mistrust news? Why we mistrust advertising? Why we mistrust our leaders? Why we mistrust corporations? Because they have lied to us. And there's consequence for that. Supposing you, you, are, you, you are in love with somebody and you trust each other, when you discover that the person you trust intimately lied to you, what happens? Then suddenly- It's very hard to trust them again. And, and at that point, if that person makes a very good argument, you don't listen. Because your right. trust has gone, no matter what they say, even if they say the right things, at that point, it doesn't matter. So you close your windows, you stop receiving. And that's what has happened. Now, there is another thing. Let's go back to how we begin our human society. Can, we, can I pause you there? Because we're a little bit over time here. Can you hold that thought? Okay. I think you're about to come up with something that's good and, and lengthy. So we need to take a quick break here. This is Stress-Free Living. We're trying to relieve stress that many of us are feeling because of social consciousness, because of being bombarded with all of these causes and all these issues. And as Ratanjit just said, and we don't trust anybody through it. We don't know who to believe through all of this. And our title today is, what is the trap of social consciousness? Is it a trap? We're going to talk much more about this on this edition of Stress-Free Living. Please stay with us. Now, don't forget where you're going, Ratanji. I did. I hate to cut you off, but I, I think you were about to get rolled up, get rolling there. Okay. Good morning. Hello, Doc, Dr. Bhatia is Hi, driving. Good, e good evening from Mumbai. Good evening. How are you? Oh. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Your talk was very well received that day. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. You were very so kind. Wonderful to have you from Bombay. Oh, my goodness. All across the oceans. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. We're just getting started well, I... early in the morning here. Oh. <laughs> so, so it's a Saturday morning. Yeah. Yes. What is, what is your thought on today's topic? 
Ah uh, yeah, I just joined a couple of minutes ago, and uh, yes, we mm-hmm. have stopped believing in in media. But then I think that also further leads to insensitivity in society because um, I'm sure some 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 things which they say are genuinely true. Some struggles that you know people go through and are projected in the media are genuine and are real. So probably this again uh, takes us to towards a more insensitive kind of world, you know, where we we choose to disbelieve. all that and we become immune to suffering of people i think through that yes i mean the reasons of course could be different they have lied to us or whatever but uh, I, I, for example there are so many issues related to human rights and uh, you know towards uh, to, uh, related to environment but then we have become very immune to all these issues and so that is very dangerous i feel yes We are, we are we are saying the same thing. Thank you. Very, very good, though. We'll talk about the insensitivity. That's a good point. Yes. Yes. Thank you for being with us. Uh, we only have about thirty seconds, I think. No, we're back now. We are back on stress free living. Thank you so much for being with us. We talk on our breaks with our Zoom callers. We really enjoy that. If you would like to be part of our Zoom audience. and interact with us during the show we welcome you that way we can see your faces you can see ours and also we get to talk with you again during the breaks and before and after the show ratanji you were just about to get into um, a particular thought i hope you still made note of that one because that was a few minutes ago uh relative to uh understanding where we're at in this process and and why we have become socially many of us are, are choosing to be socially unaware See when we started, uh, or you know, coming from the Stone Age, life was difficult. We have to rely on so many things, and so human beings started to form clusters so they can support each other. So that went into the bigger picture, and now finally we constructed this society. At this point, we all know that each. human being each person is an independently created masterpiece nature never repeats itself if you see that's why fingerprint of everyone is different eyes are different or dna is are different so we are all uniquely made we have unique capabilities we have unique viewpoint so if the social awareness is about realizing that we are dealing with unique individuals so being aware of what is what is good for them what is required by them rather than judging them so what has happened is that we because of our insecurity living in this huge society because of the emphasis on money emphasis on wealth emphasis on collecting things we have gone in the wrong direction all our know how all our technology all our good things we have amazing miracle uh, development in healthcare but the healthcare system itself is infected by making money so doctors and hospitals are judged by how many operations they do unnecessary testing unnecessary operation is common today in healthcare system so such a noble profession such a noble area and and so everything we have today is infected so a human being is completely frustrated because they can't trust anybody they can't can trust their government they cannot trust their scientists they cannot trust coca cola or or these uh, these sugar drink manufacturers have hired scientists there was news in new york times 
And the scientists are hired to prove that sugar is not bad for you. So now we are using science and, and you remember smoking. Smoking industry use scientists to tell that, you know, smoking does not kill you. And look at where we are. So right. this, this is what we have come through our society. As a consequence, and now is there any wonder we have insensitized human being for getting the right, it, it is impossible to get right information in anybody's mind today because it is contaminated. Well, the distrust, we, I, I agree with, the contamination I agree with. What do you think about our human response to withdrawing, to, to say enough is enough, even without that distrust factor, even just saying, I can't carry, I can't possibly care about a hundred different social issues. I have to take care of my spouse and my kids, and I have to do my job and pay my bills. And, and I'm not going to look outside beyond my immediate needs. What do you think of, of the fact that that is truly happening? I, they can't, they can't even see beyond what they have to take care of because they're having problems taking care of the things they have to, let alone the things that maybe they should care about. So the human needs, human beings are social animals. It's like my human body requires food for me to survive. If somebody says your food is contaminated, don't eat. So I'll die without eating food also. So similarly, when you are withdrawing from society, you are withdrawing from social circle, you are not trusting anybody. And sooner or later, we are going to find you and your family cheats you. So you don't trust your family, you don't trust your friends. So as a, as a consequence, you become segregated. As a consequence, you become uh, completely uh, frustrated. And as a consequence, we are destroying the very fa fabric of the society because we all need each other, Ray. The society cannot exist without each other. We are all dependent on each other. What one thinks affects other. What one does affect other. So that is why we have so many institutions who are supposed to, or religious institutions are supposed to give us that uh, message, don't judge, serve. Every human being is there for you to serve them, don't judge them. But when the, when the religions started dividing us, then there is no savior left. So this whole thing ultimately comes down to self-awareness. The solution lies in before we become socially aware, we have to become self-aware. Once you know yourself, you begin to know others. The problem is I don't even know myself. How can I know anybody else? People say, oh, come on, Ratanjit, I know what is my name, what is my nationality, what I do, what I like, what I don't like. That's not what I'm talking about. Those are all requirement of the vehicle which is carrying you, your human body, your five senses, what tastes good you eat, what smells good you, you use as a perfume, what looks good you associate with, but you hear what Sounds good, you listen. But those are all requirement or uh, basically assessed by your five senses. But you are beyond your five senses and you have not touched that entity present within you. 
And because you have not been aware of that entity, you are not able to see the same entity in others. So I want to move there. I, I think you're. I think it's time, and and we want to talk about this for sure. But I want to go back and just summarize a little bit for my own benefit and hopefully for our audiences too, that we've been talking for the first half of the show about all of the issues that are around us out there, all of the social conscious awareness issues. And there truly are more at the surface today than ever. And depending on where we live in the country or we live in the world or where we live in a neighborhood, maybe they're higher or worse. I, on my big list before, I didn't even mention crime. And, and crime and gang violence is, you know, the number of deaths that occurred during the pandemic, the, the number of assaults and, and murders that happened during the pandemic period, you know, is very, very high um, for a variety of reasons. So, you know, crime is, is still rampant and, and drugs and overdoses and suicides. I mean, just so many issues. And as one of our Zoom guests that commented during the break, we've become immune to them. We, we've become insensitive. It, it wasn't many years ago that if we heard of a domestic violence murder situation where a man killed his wife and kids, for example, something brutal like that, we were in shock and everybody was talking about it. Today it happens and it's, okay, what's the next story? You know, uh, terrorism, when, when somebody would go in and, and shoot up a, a, a lobby, you know, in a, in a building, it used to be big news covered. Now it's, well, that happened today. Let's move on. We've become insensitive to all of these social awareness issues because they're just so commonplace. And so we've been talking about all of these factors and all the reasons why people are either withdrawing or why they're angry, why they're stressed, why they're, they don't know what to, to do and who to trust and who to believe. I mean, I think we've laid out for the first half hour here that, that there's a real problem with social awareness and social consciousness, despite the fundamental belief that we should be socially conscious and we should care about the community and try to help people but it's not working right now. The way we're doing it is, is just causing everybody stress and aggravation and frustration, and it's not really accomplishing what it's supposed to. So did I restate what, what you know, do you agree that did I say that properly? Yeah, I mean, okay. this topic, you know, you can it'll, it'll take several <laughs> weeks to <laughs> decipher this. But see, the thing is this, Ray, when your inner conscience is what decides about you, you, you can fool the entire world. You can dress up well, you can speak well, you can drive a Mercedes, you can have a huge home, you can impress everybody, you can have all the trophies, you can have Nobel Prizes and everything. But ultimately, what counts within you is what you really think of you. You cannot fool your own conscience. You can fool the world. So what happens is when your conscience is not getting the food it needs, it, you, you're, it's like eating uh, artificial nutrient, artificial food. It is made out of uh, artificial, it tastes good, it smells like real food, but it does not satisfy you because it does not give you nutrition. That is what has happened in our society. All the things around us, material things, fame, technology, all that are really entertaining your five senses. Your inside is feeling discontent, not satisfied. It's ultimately asking question, so what? And that's why we don't want to 
allow that voice to come through and we are forcing ourselves to be busy. Whether we are playing game on computer or doing something or chatting or seeing something, we are keeping ourselves so busy that we are not, we are not allowing us to hear the voice within us. But sooner or later, that voice gets to us. And at that point, you feel so, con so torn apart. He says, my goodness, what have I done? And you blame because your old habit is blaming others. You blame the society, you blame the government, you blame technology, you blame everything. But not realizing that you have not followed your conscience. And as a, as a consequence, many times we end up committing suicide. Now today there is a new method of committing suicide because you have gun, you go shoot somebody randomly, you know that you're going to be killed because it is harder to kill yourself. So you put yourself in that position that somebody's going to kill you. So mm -hmm. this is a new way of committing suicide, mm -hmm. whereas we call it a crime. But ultimately, this is coming from our inner conscience, not being listened to, not being uh, addressed to. So it's not the world, my friends. It is you. You have to listen to your inner conscience. And you have to do what this conscience says, not to win trophies or medals, not to get famous, but for your own inner contentment. You know, Ratanjit, it, it, it does hurt a little bit to have to go deeper. You know, yes. it's kind of like if you get a, um, you know, a piece of wood, a, a little splinter of wood in your finger, and if it's still sticking out, you can pull it out. It doesn't hurt too much. But if it's really in there deep and you've got to really go in there deep, that hurts yes. to, to pull that out. OK, and I think that's what you're kind of talking about, because we have this world around us that is entertaining us. It's, it's getting us excited. It's getting us preoccupied with TV and movies and music and and entertainment, everything around us and buy this and go shopping and, and get a new car and change your house and all these things that are kind of on the surface. It's kind of like that little bit of a sliver that, you know, it's on the surface and you can do that to temporarily forget about the real problems and, and, for, and not go deeper in what's really bothering you. But at some point in time, you have to go deeper. You have to say, this can't be solved by temporary entertainment, by going to a concert or by buying a new house, because my discontent, my frustrations are at a deeper level than I can temporarily please my five senses and get through another day. And I think that's what I'm hearing you to, to say, and we want to move on this on the other side of the break, is that the only way to dig deeper is by looking within ourselves yes. and, and becoming more self-aware and stop blaming everybody else around us and looking for comfort everywhere else around us when the answer has to be from within. Very good. Okay, so if we're on the same page, then we're going to move forward. We're going to take uh, our, our last break here of the program. This is Stress-Free Living. I hope that maybe we're going to help you relieve some of your stress in your life because we're all feeling it today more than ever. We'll come back and we'll wrap up this topic and uh, talk not only about social awareness, but about our inner self-awareness. Is that the answer to this mystery? We'll be right back. All right, we have uh, a minute or so, a minute and a half, if anybody would like to join in. You're welcome to talk to us if you'd like. Dr. Jackjeet, are you with us yet? Yeah. There you are. Uh, well, it is uh, to start with the biasness and awareness is a very good 
if you should have a special program on biasness and awareness, how how this is being, this causes everything. And uh, really... Did you say biasness? Yeah. In, okay, okay. I just want to make sure I get awareness. that. Yeah, are, that is where it started. Very, we are not aware of the on the basis of the facts, but rather than on different type of biasnesses we have, and there are different kinds of bias. It might be because of uh, religion, race, religion, and even the belief systems and many other things. And that causes that is the exactly what he is talking about that inner conscious should not have a biasness but uh, once those biasness are created right from childhood then our lens of seeing the things or looking at the things is totally changed and we don't see the actual truth we see something else and uh, that is causing a lot of uh, problems also well, you know, it's a very, big topic and it should take, you should take another program for it. Well, maybe we do zero in on that. I, I think that might, that might be a very good idea to, because we're, we're talking as if people do get this and understand it. And maybe we need to delve more into that. We have to come back. Welcome back to Stress-Free Living. Ratanjit Sandi and yours truly, Ray Samich with you today, talking about social consciousness. What does that really mean? And we know that if you do understand what it means, it's an awareness of what's happening all around us. And today, there seems to be a greater awareness. There just seems to be more things to be worried about and to be barraged with by the media, by the advertising industry, by people wanting to tell us what we should do and what we should believe and how we should respond. And uh, as we all know, I think we all learn this in life. It's motivated more by money, money, motivated by personal gain for others than it is for perhaps what is really true and what is really right. So Ratanji, what we've uh, ended up with is that people, they do become social aware. Some people withdraw, some people stay out there. But ultimately, they're not fulfilled. Ultimately, they keep trying to do things and act certain ways and believe certain things. And, and for whatever reasons, they're ultimately feeling discontent, maybe even feeling frustrated to the point of contemplating ending their life. You say it's not really as much a question of social awareness and social consciousness as it should be our inner awareness, our personal awareness, our personal consciousness, our personal evaluation of our self-worth. Would you elaborate on that? Well, see, we, we have to uh, have the right looking glasses, Ray, to look around social consciousness. It means being aware of. So to become aware of, we have to use the tools we have, we listen to people, we see what is happening and, and we are aware of. But if you are listening and seeing people from a lens which has a color of what is in it for me, whether it is going to remove my fear, is it going to give me more money? Is it going to make me famous? Is it going to make me satisfy my indulgence? So if that is the lens we are looking at, this awareness, so this is going to lead us to a wrong place. And again, that, that place is ultimately going to give you depression. You are going to be depressed and see our society, if you realize we have highest depression ever existed on face of earth as we have today and highest conditions which are disenchanting us in all this way. Now, we talked about the social awareness, the true social awareness can only come from self-awareness. See, Ray, we have been trying to control the world. We have been trying to make 
everything right. Whereas we haven't made the building block of the society right. I am the key building block of the society I live in. If I am defected, how can I make rest of it correct? So the correction, the right thought process, everything begins with me. And if I, you see, there is another fallacy of this nature. You have rose bush. It grows in dirt. And it has thorns. But if your focus is on rose, then thorn. So in society, ugliness is always going to be there. We have to focus on rose. We have to focus on goodness in people. We have to focus on, whereas our focus currently, our focus is on what is wrong. See, I gave an other time example. If you lose a tooth in your mouth, one tooth, your tongue is going to go there in that empty space. But you don't realize that you have 31 teeth still present, intact. But you're not focusing on 31, which are good teeth. Your focus is on the one which is missing. So until we are looking for goodness, when we, once we find goodness in us, Ray, or less changes, we begin to see goodness in others. And if, if, you, if I meet some, a, a bad guy, and if I notice something good in that person, and he is going to, or she is going to react good with me. So you, whatever area in your lawn you water grows. If you water, the wrong area that is growing. All our news today is broadcasting bad things. Everybody is talking about the problems in the society, bad, bad, bad. Nobody is talking about the goodness because we cannot talk goodness in others until we find goodness in us. Fundamental. Right. You bring up nature and have found so many examples in nature. And I want to go back to the rose a, a moment because I have a question to ask you. Whether we call it God or creation or divine or universe or whatever it is, we have to agree that the rose may be the most perfect flower, at least one of the most perfect flowers, one of the most beautiful aromas. The, the scent is just so powerful. The combination of the rose and the shape and the color and, and the scent is just amazing. Right. And yet, just below that rose, as you pointed out, there's thorns that will really hurt. If you, if you put your full fingers on them, you'll bleed and they'll hurt. So why did nature do that? It, do you think there's a lesson in that? that? That here you have this most incredible, amazing, beautiful, aromatic flower, but right just centimeters away from that are the, the, you know, things that will really, really hurt you. <laughs> is there a lesson in that? Well, see, the thing is, nothing really is bad or good, Ray. It depends on what we do with this. I'm a chemist. Potassium cyanide is the most deadly poison there is. You put it on your tongue and you die. You can't even tell the taste. It's so deadly. But without that chemical, we cannot manufacture many of those drugs which save life. And that product is also used to extract gold from gold mines. <clears throat> so it is up to us to find the goodness in everything. There is nothing bad or good. It depends on what we do with it. 
So that rating of good and bad is erroneous. All right. So in the remaining few minutes that we have left, if we're tired of, of being, and that's a bad way of putting it, if we're confused about all the social consciousness and awareness, and maybe we're in that trap, as the title of our show said, we're in the trap of social consciousness, and it starts internally. How do we start, Ratanjit? How, how does somebody listening right now say, okay, I'm tired of that. I am frustrated with that. I want to do the right thing now. How do I change? How do I start thinking differently about all of these issues and concerns that are out there around us? I have to find my real conscious. I have to find goodness in me. Now, my goodness is not my education, not my skills, not my creativity. The real goodness which exists in me is the power which empowers me. A universal power which brings life in me is a flawless goodness. You can call it God. You can call it universal power. And once you realize that is who you are, you begin to see the same power present in everyone else you come across. You begin to see goodness. You begin to see the rose. You don't see the thorn in them. You don't see the dirt in which it grows around it. So once you have seen the real uncontaminated goodness present in you, it is the same exact goodness which is present in everyone else. And once you focus on that, then you begin to serve. And then all the garbage which is thrown at you, you will pick up the roses out of the garbage. Even when you watch the news, you will be able to decipher something good out of that, which will incentivize you to make good for the bigger society. You begin to serve the universe through serving one person at a time to serving the enlivening power present in them. So once you are in that mode, your life dramatically changes. You become independent of circumstances, Ray. And actually that mindset begins to generate very amazing creativity thoughts in you which is going to allow you to add the highest value to the surroundings, to your loved ones, to the society, and your self-worth goes up, which results ultimately into increased net worth. Just one minute left, but I have to ask you, does that make you more gullible though? We already don't trust anything. Does that make you more naive if you're just looking for the goodness in things, does that make you more naive? And, and we know that we can't trust a lot of sources. Does, does that hurt on that side? No, it gives you more control, Ray, because you're not judging anybody, because you're looking for goodness and you disempower everybody who is judging you. If somebody comes and shouts at me, I'm trying to find what is good in that person. And ultimately this person says, gosh, are you crazy? I'm telling you all these bad things. You're not getting mad. Okay. Who has the control? You have the control. So that eliminates the noise at that yeah, point. Eliminates the noise. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Ratanji, thank you. Uh, there truly is a trap in social consciousness. I think we've answered that question. And uh, the only way out of that trap is with our own social awareness and seeing the good that is within us from our divine and using that to see that in others. Ratanji, thank you so much. Thank Always you. a pleasure to be with you. And thank you so much for being a part of our program. We really enjoy having you, wherever, thank however you. you come with us, Zoom or uh, radio or internet. We love having you on board. We invite you back each and every week. Thank you so much. Remember folks, we're all playing the same game. Have a great week.